Every election season, gun owners like myself worry about what the next politician is going to do to try to take away my guns. Hillary Clinton has recently given us an idea exactly what she wants to do if she is made the next president. And AR AWR Hawkins of Breitbart News reported on this story, and he joins us here today. AWR, welcome to Smart Life. Good to have you. Great to be with you, Dr. Gina. Now, I have to tell you that uh, his wife was my CPAC crush this year. I have one every year. It's just somebody I meet at CPAC that I think is the coolest person I never met before. And, uh, and that was this amazing and dynamic couple who are out there really taking it all on. So uh, tell her hello. and such a great honor to have you on the show with us today. Now, uh, Hillary Clinton... You know, the automatic weapons, that word immediately makes people think of, well, what I think of, frankly, when I step off a plane in a third world country and there's a guy standing there with the layers and layers of magazines, and I think if he decides I need to go because I look suspicious, it's going to be fast. Um, and, and that's, I think, what people think of. But I want you to get down to some of the confusion out there about the different kinds of guns and our labeling of them and how that really works and where Hillary may be completely off base. Uh, no problem. You know, uh, with an automatic weapon, when you pull the trigger and hold it, it continuously fires. Or you'll have a selector switch on it where you can fire with uh, three round bursts. So every time you pull the trigger, boom, 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 it fires three times. Uh, a semi-automatic weapon is semi-automatic. It fires one time every time you pull the trigger. If you pull the trigger 30 times, it will fire 30 bullets, no more, no less. Uh, and so it fires one bullet every time you pull the trigger. Now, what uh, Hillary Clinton did, either on purpose, which would be my gut feeling, but that's my opinion, what she did is she either purposefully or in ignorance said that people were using uh, fully automatic weapons or automatic guns in school shootings. It's not the case. Uh, they, they use semi-automatic weapons. And uh, so then she seeks a ban on automatic weapons in order to keep gun owners from terrorizing other Americans. So you have a play on all of these words, and it's easy to get people excited if you start throwing around a word like automatic, machine gun fire, so on and so forth. Not that the school shootings aren't bad, don't get me wrong, but they are not going to be solved with a machine gun ban. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard. It, it, it truly is, and, and apparently she doesn't know about the L.A. riots and how uh, business owners protected themselves and their businesses and the riots from getting out of hand, by the way, that the police weren't able to handle uh, with some of these exact weapons that she wants to ban. But you point out in your article that no one is using, quote unquote, automatic weapons, which are already illegal in school shootings. Um, you, you point to Senator Joe Mankin of uh, West Virginia. Uh, the author of one of these gun control bills, uh, and you say that he even admitted that this bill would not have stopped the crimes like Sandy Hook, like um, the one in Santa Barbara, like the one in Oregon, like Fort Hood. Uh, we go on it. The list goes on. It, 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 the bottom line is this is feel-good legislation, isn't it, Dr. Hawkins? That's, that's exactly right. And the thing is, not only will it not stop crime, it will enable the government to create a gun registry. And that honestly is the, that's the end around game here. Uh, you know, Joe Manchin, Senator Manchin, West Virginia, was pushing expanded background checks. The dirty little secret, Dr. Gina, is that expanded background checks, although they will take place in more places if the bill passes, they will still be the very same background checks that the gunmen, as you cited, at Fort Hood, at Arapahoe High, at the Aurora Movie Theater, at Fort Hood again, at the DC Navy Yard, at LAX, at the Oregon School, so on and so forth. They all pass these background checks. They do not stop crime. The ultimate end game is to play on our emotions, get us to accept background checks, which are just window dressing. And background checks, if they're going to be universal, will require a gun registry to be enforceable. And so that will come in as part B. And that's what we have to watch. And you say, in fact, in your article on Breitbart, that criminals prefer handguns to these so-called assault rifles anyway. Does right. she not know this? Or is this just more a uh, sort of sinister plot to take the, hand, the guns out of the hands of law-abiding citizens? 
Well, I think it's part of that plot. And I mean, this is a slippery slope argument from me. And so some people may or may not agree with it, but I think they see an emotional opportunity to ban a class of guns, uh, let's say assault rifles. Once they get those banned, as crime continues, they can then go, you know what? We need to ban certain types of handguns, too, because crime continues. And then they'll ban semi-automatic handguns. Once they get those banned, they can go, well, we need to go ahead and ban those revolvers because crime continues. So I believe they're looking for the easiest group of guns for them to ban. That gets their foot in the door. Once that happens, uh, they can do what they want. One of my favorite states uh, to be in, just for so many reasons, but because of their understanding of liberty and freedom and their understanding also of how to actually stop crime, and that is to put guns in the hands of well-trained, law-abiding citizens, is Florida. I will never forget the day that I walked into a restaurant in Florida, and it, it said, your uh, concealed weapons welcome in our restaurant because uh, the, the whole Luby's, Ruby's, whatever it was where that big shooting had happened uh, it, and they wanted to make sure that, that the criminals knew that the trained law-abiding citizens in their restaurant were armed so the criminal better not even think of coming there to commit a massive assault. This is the same concept as, as the uh, you know gun-free zones in schools that causes so many dead children and that's really what's that's really the price that's being paid uh, Dr. Hawkins for Hillary's feel good legislation. But now Florida's school board considers this a uh, stand your ground law for students. Tell us about this. You wrote about it. Well, the stand your ground law for students is similar, you know, you you've described part of Florida's stand your ground law for concealed carry permit holders. That law says that if I were to come under attack, uh, that I no longer have to retreat. And if I feel that I am in danger of death, I can respond with lethal force, meaning I can shoot my aggressor or my attacker. I can kill him to stop the aggression. Well, a school board in Duval County, they are considering a stand your ground uh, type of policy for their school because they say we've gone so far down the leftist road that kids can't even fight back now. If they are attacked in school, they basically have to ball up and fall on the ground. And the school board is saying, look, they should be able to fight back to defend their lives without facing administration repercussions. And so that's what they're pushing for in that school. And I think it's a, such a contrast to states, for example, like Vermont that you also wrote about who uh, are uh, suspending a, I believe it was a Vietnam veteran. So somebody obviously fully trained, a clerk in a store, a sitting duck for a criminal, AWR. How right. can they possibly suspend this man for wanting to defend himself? But that, it makes no sense. Uh, the suspension must be reversed. I mean, they suspend him. He saw the gentleman come in. I, I shouldn't call him a gentleman. He saw the, the would-be robber come in. He had a bandana hanging over his face. He's wearing a hoodie. He comes in and he tells the gentleman, the Vietnam vet, empty the register, and he waves a knife in the Vietnam base, vet's face. This is the heartwarming part of the story, though. The Vietnam vet grabbed his gun pulled it out, put it in the robber's face, waved it in his face and said, you get the blank out of here right now. And the guy took off running. This vet should be applauded. He saved not only the store from being robbed, he saved his own life, yet he gets suspended. Ridiculous. Absolutely absurd. And you look back at so many of these crimes and the, the part that they never think about. For me, it's so mathematical. You know, for example, with the Santa Barbara shootings, you'll remember, uh, you know, they, they, they make schools gun-free zones. And so, of course, none of the first three students that were stabbed to death by the Santa Barbara killer were, were armed in any way, shape, or form. But if one of them had been, quite possible there would have been no deaths that day in that horrible incident. They don't. They just, it's like they don't do the math or they're truly less concerned about dead children than they are about feel-good legislation. No, you're exactly right. I mean, if we wanted to be, if we were really concerned about people staying alive versus dying, we would have followed Santa Barbara with a let's arm legal gun owners campaign where we offered freely to train people for their concealed carry license. We offered freely to take them shooting, to get them familiar with their guns so they can carry them for self-defense. But instead of doing that, they have sought to take guns away. And it shows that safety is not their real concern. It's not. And we have example after example from 
uh, you know, from Cobb County, Georgia to Florida, your crime statistics are directly relative to how many law-abiding citizens you have that are trained to use yeah. guns. Dr. A.W.R. Hawkins, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for your work on Breitbart. We'd love to have you back soon. Thank you. All Great right. To be with you.